The Darkspawn Horde emerged from the Earth with the Archdemon Dumat at its head in 395 Ancient. For 90 years they ravaged the northern lands of Thedas, then ruled by the Tevinter Imperium. To many it seemed the end of the world was nigh, as the Imperium's armies were not able to stop the Horde. But at that time a gathering of soldiers took place in the Anderfels at Weishaupt. These were human, elven, and dwarven veterans of the Blight that had raged all their lives. They forswore all loyalties to nations and rulers, devoting themselves to a singular cause, fighting the Blight. They welcomed anyone who would join them, disregarding any race or class distinction, even those with sordid pasts, as long as they have the ability and will to fight the Darkspawn. They called themselves the Grey Wardens. In war, victory. In peace, vigilance. In death, sacrifice. For 100 years they fought the Blight, rallying the peoples of Thetis. They gained much favor and support from both the common people and the powerful as they ranged across the continent astride the griffins they adopted as their emblem. Finally, in 203 Ancient, the Wardens gathered an army of soldiers from Tevinter, Syrian tribesmen of what is now Orle, and the peoples of Ravain to face Dumat at the Battle of the Silent Plains. There the Wardens accomplished what nobody had before, they slew the Archdemon Dumat permanently, and thus the first blight was ended. The Darkspawn became disorganized and were exterminated on the surface or fled to the deep roads. The Grey Wardens were hailed as heroes all across the land, entering into legend. They gained certain privileges for their continued service against the Darkspawn. Most nations gave a formal pledge of support in the event of further Darkspawn invasions. They also gained the right of conscription, by which they may conscript anyone into the Order, whether they be a convict or a prince, willing or not. Though in practice there are limits to their ability to invoke that right. Four more times has an archdemon risen to lead the Darkspawn, and each time the Grey Wardens have been there to meet it and ultimately slay the archdemon. Though sadly their griffin mounts were rendered extinct at the end of the Fourth Blight. They have outposts in every nation in Thetis as long as they uphold their promise of political neutrality and the members of their order have a privileged place that exists outside of the local social structures. An elf who would be sneered down upon by human nobility, may be regarded with respect wearing a warden's armor. A mage, whose very presence outside a circle of magi could be grounds for capture or execution by the Chantry Templars, may flout such restrictions openly as a Grey Warden, even to the point of dabbling in forbidden magic. Even criminals guilty of terrible crimes will have their pasts overlooked once they join the Order. What makes the Grey Wardens crucial to defeating the Blight is not their devotion or skill at arms, though those are considerable. What makes the Grey Wardens special is their secretive initiation, the joining. Warden recruits are made to retrieve a sample of Darkspawn blood under the supervision of a more senior Warden. This is a test of their ability and dedication to fight Darkspawn. Once acquired, a single drop of Archdemon blood is added to the gathered Darkspawn blood. The sheer rarity of that ingredient is why Grey Warden numbers have always been limited. The mixture is made remotely consumable using magic, the particulars of which is a closely held secret of the Wardens. Then the recruits drink the blood. We speak only a few words prior to the joining. But these words have been said since the first. Alistair, if you would. Join us, brothers and sisters. Join us in the shadows where we stand vigilant. Join us as we carry the duty that cannot be forsworn. And should you perish, know that your sacrifice will not be forgotten. And that one day, we shall join you. 
Davith, step forward. For some recruits, the joining is immediately fatal, though their sacrifice is still honored by the Wardens. Those that survive gain new abilities instead of becoming ghouls. They become part of the collective awareness of the Darkspawn, but can resist the song of the old gods that drives them. This allows them to sense Darkspawn in their proximity, though the Darkspawn can sense them in turn. The Grey Wardens are always the first to know when a blight occurs, because they begin to hear the Archdemon in their nightmares. They also gain resistance to the blight, so they need not fear being poisoned by darkspawn blood in battle. Some Wardens have found ways to draw on the power of the blight to gain more magical or physical power, though doing so is not something a Warden is usually capable of. None of that is what makes them crucial to stopping the Blight. An Archdemon cannot be killed by normal means. Upon death, the Archdemon's soul will jump into the nearest Blighted creature. If that creature is a Darkspawn, the Archdemon will be reborn from its body and continue to lead the Horde. If a Grey Warden slays the Archdemon, the Archdemon's soul will attempt to possess them, and in the process both the Grey Warden and the Archdemon will be destroyed. Thus has been the Warden's successful strategy for ending each Blight so far. All of this comes at a price, however. The Grey Warden's resistance to the Blight's corruption is only a temporary reprieve. It can take decades to happen, depending on the individual, but given time, every Warden will begin to succumb to the Blight's corruption in mind and body. A Warden will know their time has come as they begin to experience ominous dreams and hear the song of the old gods as the Darkspawn do. In time, the same physical and mental deterioration that takes all infected by the Blight will claim them as well. They call it the Calling, when a Grey Warden whose resistance to the Blight has begun to falter journeys alone into the Deep Roads to kill as many Darkspawn as they can before they are killed. By ancient agreement with the Dwarves of Orzammar, a Warden near their calling will serve among the Dwarves fighting the Darkspawn in the Deep Roads for a year. When the calling becomes unbearable, they will be celebrated by their Dwarven comrades before heading into the Deep Roads alone to their death. For this, the Dwarves of Orzammar hold the Wardens in high esteem and signed a treaty promising aid in times of blight. The Grey Wardens are one of the only groups that takes an interest in the Dwarves' constant fight against the Darkspawn, and they often journey below ground between Blights to monitor Darkspawn movements. Orzammar's Assembly has even declared recruitment to the Grey Wardens as an exception to the rule that Dwarves who journey to the surface become castless. As fighting the Darkspawn is a sacred cause to them, Dwarves who journey to the surface as Wardens retain their caste upon return to Orzammar. Though it is well known that Grey Wardens have abilities, the true nature of the joining and its consequences are not well known to the public, and the reason why it has always been a Grey Warden who slays the Archdemon is a secret within the Order. The lowest rank among the Grey Wardens is the Warden Recruit, a rank given to anyone that has been recruited by the Order but has yet to take their joining. Upon taking their joining, whether they survive or not, they are raised to the rank held by most rank-and-file Wardens, Warden Ensign, though outside of paperwork they are simply called Wardens. Mages of this rank are sometimes called Acolytes. Veterans may be granted the rank of Senior Warden or Warden Lieutenant, depending on region, 
They will usually command small squads or undertake special missions alone. The second in command for the wardens of a given region is the Warden Constable, formerly the Constable of the Grey. They act as field commanders and stand in for the regional commander when they are otherwise occupied. A regional branch of the wardens may also have an archivist responsible for maintaining records. Each regional branch of the wardens is headed by a warden commander, formerly called the Commander of the Grey. Distance from the warden headquarters effectively gives warden commanders autonomy in terms of how they run their commands and combat the darkspawn within their respective regions. In times of blight, the rank of field commander is temporarily granted to command the wardens of an area against a particular darkspawn incursion. The rank has similar responsibilities to a warden commander. At Weishaupt Fortress, the Chamberlain of the Grey is the head archivist for the Order responsible for maintaining communication with the regional warden commanders, collecting annual reports on their progress against the Darkspawn. Technically, the Chamberlain outranks all warden commanders, but their role is more bureaucratic than military. The High Constable, once aerial commander of the Order before the extinction of the Griffins, now tends to serve more as the public face of the Wardens in the Anderfells, acting as ambassador to the King and leading recruitment in the region. The formal head of the Grey Wardens is the First Warden. Since the loss of the Griffins, difficulty maintaining communication for the Order across the entire continent has made direct military command of all the Wardens' forces impractical. Though the First Warden maintains the right to give commands and summon any and all Warden commanders to Weishaupt, in practice military command of the Order is fully delegated to the regional commanders. Thus the First Warden is seen as more of a political leader or even a figurehead of the Order outside the Anderfells. Within the Anderfells, Wardens are treated with immense reverence and many of the people look to the Order for leadership. Thus, the internal politics of the kingdom tends to occupy the First Warden's time. While most still view the Wardens as heroes, especially after the recent Fifth Blight, some view them with suspicion, especially between Blights. In one infamous case, the limits of a kingdom's willingness to accept the Grey Warden's necessity was breached by Warden Commander Sophia Dryden of Ferelden, who convinced her fellow wardens to join her in a failed coup against her cousin, the king. As a result, the Grey Wardens were banned from the kingdom for 200 years. During the Fifth Blight, Ferelden Regent Loghain Mactir barred Orlesian Grey Wardens from entering the kingdom out of suspicion that they might help re-establish Orlesian rule that the Ferelden's had only recently thrown off. Even in their fight against the Blight, their dedication may extend to actions that sacrifice ethics and lives in the name of fighting the Darkspawn. To give a drastic example of such thinking gone wrong, the Grey Wardens of the South were tricked by the blighted mage Corypheus, who used his influence over the Blight to create a false calling, convincing the Grey Wardens that their end was imminent. A mage of Tevinter came to Warden Commander Clarel of Orlais with a plan to extinguish the threat of the Blight once and for all by having the mages of the Order sacrifice their comrades to summon an army of demons. But unbeknownst to the Wardens, the ritual they used would bind the mage's will to Corypheus. Their plan was thwarted by the Inquisition, but the Grey Wardens came within a hair's breadth of becoming pawns by which Corypheus would destroy or lay. Regardless of their failings, the Grey Wardens are perhaps the only figures in Thetis that enjoy almost universal respect, for they fight not for faith or kingdom or any selfish cause, but to protect all peoples. In Thetis' darkest hours, the Grey Wardens have been there to provide hope and stand as a shield against the horrors of the Blight. They have never shied away from this duty, and the people of Thetis pray they never will. Okay, big topic. I wondered if I should go into how the Wardens are supposed to be having some sort of infighting after Inquisition, but I decided to leave it out since there's so little information. 
Well, I hope you liked the video. Let me know if you have any criticism or what you liked. Have a nice day.